So the 2023-2024 Championship is well underway. And of course, we've already seen a few surprises as, of course, we enter the month of September, of course. But which managers will make the distance, of course, and which managers will actually get sacked? We're going to take a look at that and more next. <laughs> Folks, back once again with another video today. We're taking a look at the championship managers, of course, and do some uh, predicting, of course. I've got my hands on my crystal balls right here, right now, and I can see the future. And I'm going to call each and every one of the 24 managers currently in the championship where they'll be at the end of the season. We'll take a look at it, all of it in a second, of course. Big shout out to the VIPs, of course. And if you're new, where you've been, smash your subscribe and back to all things championship related, Bob and Rose related, world football related. We're going to all here, boys. Under one Ruski. We're going to start from, of course, the top of, of course, alphabetically, Birmingham City's coach, all the way through to the bottom down there, West Bromwich Albion, and call wherever the managers will be, whether they're going to be at the club, whether they're going to be fired, of course, or anything else along the lines. We'll take a look at it in a second again. Once big, big shout out once more time for the patrons, of course. So let's get into it and, of course, tell you what we're talking about. We're talking about these guys right here, right now. I'm going to start with top of the shop here, John Eustace. Now, I'm not going to try and become uh, or, or, or bluff this. There, I'm, if I've seen already any links out there i'm going to be open and honest with you i'm going to be open and honest with you right here right now there is a link with john eustace being uh skyped or not skyped scouted for the next rangers uh job of course michael beale's not had a fantastic start over in scotland of course this campaign and of course john eustace has done an incredible job with birmingham city and of course they have new owners anyway uh so they might have their own plans up their sleeve but i do think that john eustace will not be at this club uh coming at the end of the season whether it is uh of course wiped from another coach uh, from another team or whether he'll be sacked I'm actually going to pluck and say he's going to resign uh, of course this campaign and of course probably looking at around about I'd say uh, November time uh, maybe after the international break in October uh, uh, of course or, or towards the month of November and of course taking up another opportunity whether that is in Glasgow or whether it is somewhere else I do not think even though John used to done a fantastic job with Birmingham sitting in sixth we saw it last year with Michael Beal at QPR done a fantastic job with them putting them at the the top of the table and of course he then made that leap to Rangers but for me a similar sort of scenario for John Eustace no disrespect to Birmingham they'll they'll be okay with that and they've got money and backing and they'll go somewhere else so I do think there'll be a different coach uh, into the month of November and beyond for Birmingham City JDT that's right Yondal Thomason for Blackburn Rovers of course there is no denying that he is a, un, unhappy at Rovers with the financial aspect of the game but I do believe he's, a, he's a, 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 an ethical person a, a, a person of, of a bit of loyalty and I do think he will be at Blackburn Rovers come the end of the season at May after that though who knows I just think right here right now for this season good bad and ugly uh, I think he's he's also uh, coming into this with a, a little less pressure the board are not expecting miracles right here right now and of course uh, for me I don't think John Dahl Thomason is going anywhere this campaign the only kind of reservation on this one is if a club like a Leeds or, or uh, 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 a Premier League club or, or a club that's got parachute money um, has has uh, a vacancy, then he may get lured elsewhere. But for me, I don't see that happening. I think he's going to stay put right here, right now, where Blubber and Rovers. Kicking off forward, we've got this guy, of course, uh, it is Bristol City, and it's Nigel Pearson. Again, Bristol City doing A-OK, -okay, 11th in the table right here, right now. And as of recording, just one defeat the past five games. Of course, he is a uh, 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 bread and butter kind of manager here. You get what you get with, with Pearson. He's got a good track record as well across the division of the championship. It's not going to get the headlines, is Nigel Pearson, but he's going to get you some results in the end. I don't think he's going to go anywhere to be honest with you I think he's going to stay put at Bristol City I think they're content with him uh, and I think there's still a little bit left in the tank for Pearson there's no real concern about relegation so uh, if that does change then of course maybe the, the scenario will change for Pearson but for me he's going nowhere uh, next up I've got over at Cardiff we've got Irrael Bulutit of course now I was expecting this guy to be sacked and probably one of the name, first names to be sacked as well but I don't know right now I think he's turned a corner uh, with of course Cardiff City um, and uh, of course big result against Swansea most recently in the Battle of Wales but fundamentally I think Cardiff City do have aspirations to kind of get themselves out of the division they're currently as of recording into 16th spot here with a couple of wins to the name over the last three games and, and of course if that form turns sour I do think Cardiff, or City, Cardiff City will be facing a relegation battle alongside their Welsh counterparts Swansea City and if that's the case this guy is going to get sacked and I think it's coming they're going to be in a relegation battle towards the end of it. And of course, when you spend the money you did for Aaron Ramsey and co, you want to get results. But unfortunately, 
Uh, despite an okay sort of start, Bullet coming out of Cardiff is going to get sacked. That's right. Kick it on forward. We've got this guy, Coventry City. And again, a lot of uh, expectations are happening on Coventry City right here and now after their failed uh, playoff attempt last season. Made it to the final. Well done. Maybe a little bit hard done by in the end. And uh, you will probably think when you turn the clocks back and look at that squad uh, for Coventry City, they were more uh, ready to take on the Premier League than, of course, Luton Town are. It's since, even since, their um their pre their Premier League rebuild. So I think Coventry City missed the trick here. I think they've probably been more well prepared prepared for a Premier League adventure. Uh, but now situations have changed. They've lost Hamer, they've lost Gayorkas. So uh, a lot of money has come in and a lot of money has gone out. And with that outage, you're going to have to be challenging for the playoffs. And currently, as of recording, Coventry City are in 15th spot right here right now. Four draws in a row. It's not great. And uh, of course, eventually, the board are going to get a little bit antsy. And of course, Coventry City have given them a lot of time uh, to work as well. And again, I don't think there's much expectation on there, but maybe the expectation has been created from that follow-up fantastic season last season. Uh, so I think playoffs is a minimum. And if there's not there, this guy's going to be sacked. I don't think he'll, he'll get sacked until maybe like February or something like that. So uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Sacking for Robbins. And that's going to come at you around about February time. We'll see about that. Uh, kicking on forward, we got this guy. Now again, rumor has it, this guy has got days, if not hours left as Huddersfield Town Manager. It's not my, I don't know. I'm not claiming, claiming to be in the no, it's common knowledge. He said something after the weekend's game. He, of course, uh, hopes to manage a Huddersfield Town at least one more time for the Stoke game. So this guy is going. I'm not gonna 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 sugarcoat this one and, and try and drag it out. He's gonna either resign or get pushed out of the way. Uh, the, the rumor has it that Huddersfield do have another manager coming in here, but Warnock to, to be made vacant, and we're gonna go with it. Go and go with the rumors and say September the twenty something. He is gone out of his ears and probably retire for their 25th time and probably their last time. Of course, he's a personality. We'll probably haven't heard the last of him, but um, he's gone in my eyes and gone a very, very soon. Uh, next up, we have this guy, Hull City's very own Liam Rossini. done a fantastic job at Hull, sitting fifth in the table right here in our, uh, uh, just the one defeat so far uh, this season. Great manager, uh, got good aspirations, good dreams as well. And I think hopefully a good rapport with the owner. There has been talk before about Hull City trying to uh, maybe go for somebody else. Uh, so I think it's kind of a similar situation I feel to Sunderland and Tony Mowbray. If they're doing well, then there's no reason to, to, to panic. If Hull City, who have spent a lot of money, start to uh, to kind of leak some goals and leak, uh, turn up some bad results, then the pressure will mount. But right here, right now, Rossini is flying high. And of course, I even if they finish outside the playoffs, I still think this guy is going nowhere. Great manager, young coach, a lot of uh, award of football awaits for him, whether it's at Hull City or somewhere else. So he's going nowhere. Uh, as for this guy, Kieran McKenna did an absolute amazing job for Ipswich Town, currently sitting in the playoff spots with, of course, within touching distance of top spot. Of course, Ipswich just the one defeat to the name so far, of course, looking A-OK -okay right now. And again, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I guess Ipswich came in here with with uh, a steamrolling momentum behind them. Uh, and of course, they've done absolute bits to be in uh, the situation that there are already early doors in the in the championship. The only concern I would have for Ipswich fans is, is if he's going to get swiped of course if you again you look at a Southampton uh, a Leeds or Leicester City if any of those really hit the skids they're going to be looking for these young upcoming managers like a Carrick like a McKenna etc uh, etc et and again this guy could be one of those uh, and I feel Ipswich uh, as form right now and of course what he's built uh, we could actually see uh, McKenna leave Ipswich Town for pastures new that's right of course I'm going to go for swiped here and again when we think about who's in, 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 uh, in who's hot and bothered right now We've got Middlesbrough in a bit of trouble. Sunderland potentially uh, could be a couple of teams. And then you've got your Leeds, your Southamptons, your Leicesters, or maybe even a Premier League club such as uh, Sheffield United or Burnley if they get into trouble. So for me, he's not going to be here at the end of the season, uh, wh whether it's uh, sacked or something, but I'm going to say swiped. He's going to be taken away by somebody else. And of course, uh, who comes in for Ipswich Town? That's a story for another day. Next up, we have this guy. Again, uh, he's done a fantastic job of late. Leeds back in it now in 10th. It is, of course... Uh, Daniel Farker, of course, done absolute bits uh, since, uh, well, in his championship uh, pedigree. Uh, of course, he had an unsuccessful time over in Bundesliga, but now with the transfer window shot, he knows what he's working with. And of course, he's already starting to see the results with Perot scoring a few goals already. So Farker's looking good. Leeds are looking uh, better. Again, um, uh, unbeaten in four games as of recording. They're going to get this, start to climb up to the table and eventually will break into the playoffs. And who knows, maybe even make a push for the automatics. He's going nowhere. Farker, staying put. Uh, next 
next up, we have, of course, this guy's Leicester City's very own uh, Enzo Maresca. Of course, they currently find themselves in second spot within touching distance of top spot. And, of course, just the one defeat so far this season. Uh, of course, Maresca, formerly of, of or, or, or a sort of graduate of the Pep Guardiola Academy. Um, and, of course, uh, the latest member to uh, break away from that coach on his own. And he's doing an okay job for them. But realistically, he's got all the tools there. He's got the best squad in the, in the division. And, of course, I uh, do anticipate them to, to be a okay at the end of it. And that means he'll go nowhere. I don't think he'll get sacked. I think he'll stay put. And, of course, he'll push. I'm not saying they're going to get promoted, but they're going to be up there in the conversation. And I think they're going to be there throughout the season as well. Next up, we have this guy, of course, Middlesbrough Michael Carrick last season. Butter wouldn't melt in this guy's mouth. It was absolutely fantastic. Done a fantastic job. Drag Middlesbrough in there. But right here, right now, they are struggling down the foot. They are at the bottom of the table, of course, with just one point on the board. They need results and they need, need results fast. Uh, Middlesbrough I ain't no, no strangers to sacking. Check out Wilder. Check out bloody Warnock. They've gone for the for the for the 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 sort of tried and trusted ones, of course. Guess what? Carrick ain't no different. They plucked for him. He did a fantastic job. How long does he have to save this season, save his his managerial career? Because if he gets the sack here. Where does he go? Where does he go here? For me, he's going to get the sack. Um, I think they've, their form might pick up a little bit, but realistically, they've got to be challenging for players. Minimum. Minimum, of course, uh, uh, because they just missed out on automatics. Uh, Carrick sacked by before Christmas. He's a goner. Uh, Who comes in? Who knows? Again, they're, they're no strangers to, to to hiring the big boys. Next up, we have Gary Rowe of Millwall. Again, Millwall not had the greatest start so far as of recording 18th in the table uh, with just seven points on the board. Of course, there ain't no, they're, they're not. Of course, they were in the playoff talk last season and they did spend a bit of money this time around. And maybe the, the expectations are a little bit grand uh, for Millwall right now. But realistically, at the end of the day, do we think playoff playoffs are a realistic option for me well probably not so i don't think there's too much hope and expectation i think his his time at mill was is is he he's the only one that could judge that and if he is to remove be removed from that spot it's on his own accord so for me gary row is going nowhere this season he'll be here at the end of it as for next season who bloody knows uh next up we have this guy wagner wagner's boys coming at you out of norwich city again formerly of norwich uh oh he's at norwich right now isn't he formerly of huddersfield had great successes with them and look at the table right now they're doing absolute bits they did lose Josh Sargent who's a major uh, contributor for goals uh, and that's going to be a, a, bit, a bit of a drag for them but they're looking good right now and again within touching distance of top spot uh, so Wagner uh, despite my reservations for him I think he had a really poor start to his camp to his to manage your tenure here at Carra Road um, but I think he's looking good right now and he's going to stay put through the season no trouble there uh, let's kick it off forward to this guy what are the good looking look at the, look at the good looking fella right here Stephen Schumacher goodness gracious me at Plymouth Argyle now Plymouth doing okay as a recording as well into 14th right now after a fantastic League One campaign just like Ipswich just like you know those League One uh, two of the League One clubs looking absolutely fantastic uh, or formerly League One clubs and of course they ain't no different they turned us over Rovers of course quite recently uh, so their home form is going to be massive but for me the biggest uh, the biggest uh, stress that's going to be for Plymouth Argar fans is keeping hold of this guy another manager that could get swiped if we just look just a couple managers back or maybe even just the previous manager no it was yeah Carrick if he goes at Middlesbrough guess what this guy could be the one that gets uh, uh, hired to take over the reins at Middlesbrough he is a young manager exciting manager following in the footsteps of Ryan Lowe of course is now top of the table with Preston and it could be exactly the same sort of deal for this guy so the problem is Schumacher is good he's very very good but uh, maybe is he too good for Plymouth? And, and of course, will they be keep, able to keep a hold of him? I think he's swiped. Uh, I don't know when. Maybe January. Or we'll, we'll put a little uh, a bookmark on that one uh, for a club, uh, a big club that's struggling, maybe in the championship, of course. Uh, so we'll have to check back on that one. But for me, Plymouth, I think you're in trouble losing this coach. Next up, we have this guy. It is, of course, a Schumacher's predecessor. It is Ryan Lowe, of course, doing an absolutely fantastic job with Preston. Is there any 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 uh, considerations that he'll be lee Will he leave? Will he be swiped? Of course. I don't think so. I think um, he's done a, a great job. Yes, he has with limited resources. And of course, uh, Preston off end now top the table. But of course, the title is not won in September. It was won in May. Uh, and I don't think Play uh, Preston will be up there uh, come May. But uh, done a fantastic job. He ain't going anywhere. Uh, he's done a brilliant uh, bit. And of course, it'll continue uh, into the season and in, into the future as well. So Ryan Lowe going nowhere. Next up, we have this guy, of course, QPR uh, through and through. Gareth Ainsworth, that. That's right. Of course, real bad start to his campaign last year. This time, hot and cold. 
And at the minute, currently find themselves in 20th spot. They need some more results, a bit more, bit more consistency. Uh, but they've got a couple of wins so far this season. Just the same amount of wins as Leeds United. Let's put it into perspective here. So, yes, it's not great. It's not pretty. Um, but it's it's kind of working slowly. Are they going to rip it up? No. What are the boundaries for QPR this season? Kind of like lower mid-table, just to avoid relegation. I think that's what's on the order here. And I think Gareth Hayes will be given at least the season to do just that. Uh, I think uh, they're... They're operating on a bit of a shoestring. Don't think uh, Gareth Hayes, with no disrespect to him, is getting paid a bazillion dollars to do this job. So he's, he's an affordable coach. Uh, and of course, to get rid of him, it's going to cost QPR money. I think they're going to stick with him. And of course, he's going to make the season all the way to the better end. Kick it on forward. We've got this guy, of course, at Rotherham. It is, of course, Matt Taylor. That's right. Rotherham, of course, Yo-Yo Club. Uh, of course, they've uh, they had Paul Warren for many, many years. And I do anticipate, uh, again, the future of, of uh, the manager at this club is in the hands of the manager. I don't think rather than we'll part ways with them they're, they 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 expect to be in a relegation fight season in season out uh and i do think uh he will be there at the end of the season i don't the only way he could go will be if he swiped or or, or he decides to uh, take a step a step away but i think rather than fans board everybody in around the club expect a tough season uh and of course they're, they're going to give it their best shot and they did it last season with this guy in charge and i think they could they could fight again uh with him at the helm next up we have this guy of course yes right sheffield wednesday's coach uh is zico or zisco his name is uh, zisco munez of course formerly of watford did a fantastic job with watford uh and now here he is at sheffield wednesday uh, and again hands are tied behind his back struggling at the minute just the one point on the board um i think the writing's on the wall for him whether or not he will be the first manager to go i think that's going to be technically warnock so uh the next one to go could possibly be Sheffield Wednesday. So we're going to say he's going to get sacked. I think Sheffield Wednesday's owners are a little bit helter-skelter, and I think he could be one of the first to go. Uh, so we'll, put, we'll pigeon this one in, in around about October, uh, international break sort of thing. So I think he's gone, unfortunately. I like the manager. I think if he's given the right tools, he could do a fantastic job, but this is not it. It's not fair for him. Um, and who, who knows what's going to happen for Sheffield Wednesday after this. Next up, we have this guy, of course, Swansea City's. Uh, not oh, for, for, his former manager now at Southampton is Russell Martin uh, and again a lot of expectation and hope are pinned on uh, Southampton and of course the shoulders of this man he's got his own brand of football everybody sort of loves him on the first day of the season but now he's shipping goals he's just conceded nine in the last two games is uh, are they the real deal can they actually hold their own here in the championship or will they be or are they trying to punch above their weight a little bit who knows uh, but for me there is there is some cracks in this uh, don't get me wrong I think he he's he's stubborn he can be stubborn we've seen that with Swansea and of course if the players aren't on board with the with the tactics and with the with the style of play then guess what you're not going to win it you're not going to win it. it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough old battle I think this guy's going to get sacked uh, when I don't know I think they need playoffs absolute minimum of course they are within those uh, touching distance of the players right here right now as of recording in September but of course come February and March who knows so I'm going to say a 2024 sacking for Southampton this guy is out they got money to spend they got money to burn. They got money to, to sack this guy, and if he doesn't deliver the results, he's gonna. So I think he will not last the season. Where does he go from there? Who bloody knows? Next up, we have this guy, Stoke City. Is of course Alex Neal. Been here a couple of years now. Of course, maybe just maybe. And again, bit of a rebuild. Uh, you know, he's had the summer to build. He brought in a whole bunch of players, of course. And right here, right now, they are not gelling. They're in 19th spot right now. There's six points on the board uh, and just above QPR and below Millwall in the table. Uh, Alex Neal, again, I, I kind of like him as a manager. He's a bit vanilla, though. It's nothing. He's not going to get you off your seat with excitement, but he, he can grind out the results. He turned us over quite quite often in, in the past, whether at Preston, Preston North End or as a Stoke manager. So uh, he's, a, he's a hard-working grafting manager. But unfortunately, I think he's also got the writing on the wall. I think he's going to be a surprise sacking. Uh, again, they want to be, especially with the amount of money they put into this club this time around, they want to be top half and, and challenging for those playoff spots. So right now, but they look, they look toothless a little bit up front. Three defeats on the spin as of recording in the championship. That's, of course, a recipe for disaster. Next up, we have this guy, Tony Mowbray. That's right, Sunderland. Uh, oh my gosh, what do we? where do we go from here? I love Tony Mowbray, of course. He spent many, many years at Rovers. Uh, kind of the saviour, really. Stopped us from, from uh, falling into oblivion. Got us back to the championship. But it's not about that now. It's about Sunderland now. And, of course, uh, where do they go? Where do they go from here? Uh, the rumours were that uh, he was on the brink of the sack last season, despite getting into the playoffs. Mission impossible it was. For him formally straight from league one into bloody the championship and of course uh pushing for the premier league instant return in his first season there that of course should buy you some time 
However, that kind of set the boundaries a little bit. If they're not competing for the playoffs, guess what? Tony Moe is going to be in trouble. Uh, and I think if they're nowhere near the site or within a realm of, of a realistic shout of playoffs come January, of course, Mowbray could be out on his ear. And I do not know where uh, his future will lie after that because he's managed Middlesbrough. He ain't going to get the Newcastle job. He wants to be close to home. I just think this is a, a, a sink or swim now for Mowbray. They'll stand and deliver. But unfortunately, I think he's going I think he's going out. Going out with a, a blaze of glory. Sacked. Uh, I'm going to go March. March sacked. Nowhere near the playoffs. And uh, that could be uh, the last we hear from him for a while. Next up, we have this guy. Of course, over at Swansea, it's not gone right, has it, for Michael Duff. And they are currently sit themselves in the relegation spot as of recording. Of course, a bit of a gamble, perhaps, from uh, Swansea. Plucking him from Barnsley, who did a fantastic job last season. Also missing out on the promotion uh, via the playoffs on that one. Again, yet to get a, a win. Sold it, sold a lot of a talent, or lo- lost a lot of talent. Perot, uh, they got uh, Latabuareri, whatever his name is at the back. Manning, they lost a lot of people. And Russell Martin as well. So a bit of a facelift coming out uh, with Swansea. But right now, they look whimsical and they look in serious trouble. This guy could be the first manager sacked uh, but uh, fortunately there's going to be a couple couple names ahead of him I'm going to say November and he's out of here sacked that's tough gone uh, next up we have this guy of course it is Watford's very own Valerie Ishmael is he the exception to the rule will he survive past Christmas well I don't know I, I think he will survive but I think he will eventually get sacked uh, before the, the year is out I'm going to pluck for uh, a, a February sacking here Watford currently in mid table just one win from five two wins all season thus far and of course they want to be uh, competing much much better than this and and of course be a more difficult to beat uh, they did lose to rovers quite recently so i saw them firsthand i don't think there's nothing too too crazy but, uh, at watford at the moment so uh they need to click into gear and get on the same wavelength otherwise this sacking could happen earlier than expected it but for me february he's gone uh next up we have this guy carlos copperhan this is actually the final one here is west brom's carlos copperhan don't get me wrong there there is a, a, a lot going on behind the scenes in west brom financially which could uh really uh, make or break the season for West Bromwich Albion but right here right now they do have one of the best coaches I think in the division he's going to stay put uh, but I don't think they're going to have a fantastic season maybe a top half finish but that's probably at best um, and of course they've got some really good players as well paying a lot of money for them wages wise which is of course uh, uh, causing them some problems behind the scenes but Carl Scott great coach will do fantastic and of course, if he finishes in the top half with what he's been, with the tools that he's got, he'll do an absolutely fantastic job. And on the end, uh, that, my friends, is my take on the the championship matches. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below. Of course, we'll look forward to seeing what happens if I'm right, if I'm wrong. Uh, but of course, uh, let me know who you think will survive down in the comment section. Who you think will get sacked? Of course, with Warnock waiting in the wings to say goodbye to Huddersfield and probably say goodbye to championship football. Anyway, soon. But until then, guys, subscribe, thumbs up. I'll see you soon for the next one.